Hey, how are you doing out there today? Are you all good? It's been a good Sunday. I hope you've had a nap, um, enjoyed some good food. Amen. Well, interesting, isn't it? I'm talking about stop sitting under the pomegranate tree or maybe in your safe spot, not behind that counter anymore. Amen. Um, Anyway, I was just thinking about this. Wow, great job. Now I can see people. Thanks, team. Hey, um, I was thinking about this because isn't it nice when life is comfortable? And, um, you know, it's so much easier when things are planned out and things are, you know, organized and everything's where it should be. And, you know, if you do have to be stretched or um, it's in some, you know, easy way that you can manage it with, you know, your second hand. But um, nobody really likes to be uh, pushed out. No one really likes to be in the uh, front row or the front row of the the army. And I definitely was that person that, um, you know, I, I think I said, my, even when Graham and I came to the church, we sat on, you know, last row, last row. It was good when you had a lot of children actually try to not to be noticed. And, um, and anyway, I was uh, thinking about, you know, in this season that we're in, it can be really comfortable to be under the pomegranate team, tree team. It can be really comfortable to be there. And maybe we would find that as our safe place. But I truly don't believe that is where we're to sit or where we are to stay. So let's just pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for each and every person that's here tonight, Lord God. Stir our hearts. Connect them with you, Lord God. Let us hear from you, Lord Jesus. Take us home a different person, Lord God, to be one that is ready for your army. In your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, so let's turn to 1 Samuel 14, verse 1. And I'm just going to skip around a little. And it says, And Saul was in Jeba with his 600 men. Saul's own tent was set up under a fruit tree by the threshing place at the edge of town. Verse, verse 3, one day Jonathan told the soldier who carried his weapons that he wanted to attack the Philistine camp on the other side of the valley. So they slipped out of the Israelite camp without anyone knowing it. Jonathan didn't even tell his father he was leaving. Jonathan and the soldier who carried his weapons talked as they went towards the Philistine camp. It's just the two of us again, all those godless, against all those godless men, Jonathan said. But the Lord can help a few soldiers win a battle just as easily as he can help a whole army. Maybe the Lord will help us win the battle. Do whatever you want, the soldier answered. I'll be right there with you. I'm just going to stop there for a moment. You know, would that be your answer? I'll be right there with you. Or would we be a soul under the pomegranate tree? You know, it's a time not to be comfortable here. And Saul was probably tired, defeated, lacking some of his own personal strength, sitting in a comfortable position. What's wrong with all of that, hey? But here he was, maybe complacent under this pomegranate tree. Even it was placed on the outskirts of town, observing, overlooking. But here was Jonathan, who was sick of waiting, who maybe 
was like, I am fed up with this. I want to do something. I want to bring change. How long have we been sitting here for? You know, one thing is we need to be an activator, one who will emanate change, who will bring change into every room we walk into, one who will be of a different spirit, who will light up the place, not one who is hiding away. Jonathan was active. He was stirred up by the Spirit of God. He was willing and he didn't want to be comfortable. He believed in the bigger picture. Are you believing that God's got something different, something bigger for you? Jonathan had courage. Saul was prepared to wait and maybe wait a bit longer and maybe wait for the plan for everything to be lined up. It's a time for us to stop being comfortable. Are you going to be an activator of change? Are you going to be one with the spirit of Jonathan? You know, if we're fear, it's easy to be status quo. It's easy to be comfortable. There's a lot of pressures out there today pressures of life. There's pressures to get dressed in the morning, get to work on time. There's all the basic things. It's not even fun to go to the supermarket. We were talking about that over lunch today. Like, they even changed our supermarket. How can they? Um, no matter, and every one of them. Like, um, <laughs> there's so much pressures of life, but there's actually real pressure. There's pressure of finance. There's pressure of relationship. There's pressure of sickness and sickness and cancer and death. There's pressures of addiction. There's pressures of hopelessness. And it's really easy to be comfortable. It's really easy to do our life, do our work, and be happy of where we are at. But no comfort brings enlargement. Jonathan was at a place that he was sick of the status quo. He was sick of being where he was at. He was actually sick of, you know, the opposition attacking them and not gaining. He knew that his God was greater. His God was greater do we believe that enough today that we will be an activator of change in our workplace and change in our family and change in our community? Will we be one, like um, Topol spoke about, that will speak life and freedom and joy and hope? Will we be an activator of change that the time is now not to be sitting where we are comfortable? You know, it is time to stop being settled where we are at. And I know we can make every excuse. I used to do it myself. And, and you probably think this is really funny because how could she be like that when she's so like, you know, like this now and likes wearing her pink jacket and um, uh, stand out of the crowd. But, you know, I was one that didn't even like to go into a store by myself. Hey, like... Even to the dairy that knew my name, and I lived two houses down, I was like, oh, really? Do I have to? Do I have to? So many things came into my life that robbed, stealed, st took all the joy and the love away, that it was easy to be comfortable. It was easy not to be stretched. It was easy to, to do uh, what was safe. And I would say if it wasn't for Graham, I probably, and his um, gentle nudging and some 
good kicking, maybe. Um, not real kicking in the, in the uh, spiritual sense, maybe. Um, I could have been still there today. You know, we actually have to move out of the comfort. And we can, we can put an excuse like, oh, I'm shutting the door today, or oh, I've had a bad run, and oh, it's just not for me. You're that type of person. But if we're not being extended, we're not growing. In Isaiah 54 2, it says, Make your tents larger. Spread out the tent pegs. Fasten them firmly. You and your descendants take over the land of other nations. You will settle in towns that are now in ruins. Don't be afraid or ashamed. Don't be discouraged. You won't be disappointed. It is time to be enlarged. Actually, Ethan, I nearly wrote this on your birthday card yesterday. But I truly believe this is a word for you as well as every person here. But I really felt, and even today when I was preparing, that God said to me to say to you, you know, this word is for you, Ethan, as well. Extend the place of your tent pegs. Fasten them firmly, and your descendants will take over the Lord, the land of other nations. Don't be afraid and ashamed, and don't be discouraged. And I was thinking about this, Ethan, and I know a little of your background, but you are not the boy, the young boy back then. And probably this weekend, as you went home, you probably realized that you are a mighty man of God, Ethan. And God is saying to you, extend your tent pegs and he will bless you in that and he will take you further in that. And I kind of even thought, and Mel kind of told me that you're starting a new project and there's properties, isn't there? And more building, I don't know that stuff. But um, but I really felt in the Holy Spirit today that there was the start of something even bigger to come, that there was an enlargement and it might seem like, oh yeah, this is a bit of a big job. Or, oh yeah, we can do it. You said to me, oh, we can do it. Or maybe Mal said, we can do it. But God is going to enlarge you for more. And, um, and because, because you have been faithful with God, and this is just the start of so much more to come. It is a new day, Ethan. It's a new day. Think that these next years ahead is a new day for you. And I want each and every one of us to think of this word enlargement. You know, as um, we stepped onto Bull Richardson Drive, I remember this was one of the scriptures that we had in our heart and in our spirit, a day of an enlargement. And I don't know where you're sitting today, and I don't know where you're placed with Jesus, but it is a time of not being settled, of not being under that tree, or not being, of uh, shying back. It's a day of enlargement over your life, and you actually have to claim it with two hands. You know, here was Jonathan. He was of a different spirit. He was one that had tenacity, like you, James. He had a different spirit within him. And he had one person willing, his armor bearer, who said, you know, who said, I will, what did he say? I forgot it. Um, Do whatever you want, the soldier answered. I will be right there, right there with you. Are you a person that's going to say to Jesus that I will be right there with you? I'm not going to settle under there. I'm not going to be left behind like Saul. I will be right there with you. I'm excited tonight. 
because it is time that we activated change in our own life, that we put, a, put aside some of the things that have been holding us back. Maybe it's some of the, you know, the old things that are in the cupboard. Maybe it's some of those things that, oh, we just think are so hard, but we actually need to lay them to rest and move forward in advancement with Jesus. And whether we're a Jonathan or whether we're a soldier that's saying, I'm right there with you, there is a place for you in this. Jonathan wanted enlargement. He wanted to cross over. And if you think about this, so did his weapon bearer, his armor bearer. It says uh, down in verse 13, this is what we will do, Jonathan said. We will go across and let them see us. Jonathan crawled up the hillside with the soldier right behind him. When they got to the top, Jonathan killed the Philistines who attacked from the front. And the soldier killed those who attacked, attacked from behind. Before they had gone 30 meters, They had killed about 20 Philistines. The whole Philistine army panicked. Those in in camp, those on guard, guard duty, those in the fields, and those on raiding patrols, all of them were afraid and confused. Then God sent an earthquake, and the ground began to tremble. It was Jonathan and a soldier. It should have been a whole army. They woke up after this, came out. If you you, uh, read on, they woke up. They came out from their hiding places. And maybe you are that person hiding tonight, wanting to hide. I mean, we can all have days like that. I wanted to hide sometimes this week, you know, or feel in my safe place. (sighs) Put my head down from the enemy. But God is greater. God is greater than our circumstance. God is greater than a mighty army equipped with weapons. God is greater than what is ahead for you. God is greater from where you are today and from where you have been. You know, it was not one person alone. Jonathan wasn't alone. He knew that he had the power of God but he also was together with his soldier, soldier, with his armor bearer. You know, it's settled, doesn't grow our faith. If you're sitting under the tree, do you need faith even? Are you noticed under a tree? Is the enemy having a go at you? Probably not. Because you're not, out there for Jesus. Out there doesn't mean you have to be loud and proud. Out there means just ready and willing to love, to show Jesus. It takes no faith sitting. It takes no stretching. There's no challenge in that. For Saul under a fruit tree on the edge of town, he was already defeated in his heart. We need to be people that will outwork our faith. In James 2, 14, it says, My friends, what good is it to say you have faith when you don't do anything to show you really do have faith? Can this kind of faith save you? What are you doing to activate your faith? You know, one day I would have probably cried if I was made to go to SIT. Um, Maybe not, you know, be in the um, be in the kitchen buttering the cheese rolls. Whereas one part of it um, this week, I found myself there, and I thought, "Oh yeah, this is my safe place. Um, This is quite easy." The people are out there, Bernie, um, 
because it's um, it's easy to do that. It's easy to go back to that what is comfortable, and to like oh just do the job. No one will notice me here. No one will be looking for me, and I'm still helping. Well, maybe I'm just alone in that. Um, Do people even know that you believe in Jesus? Do they see that you have a faith? Are you stirred up by who Jesus is, that you love him that much? Now, we don't have to be on our street, on a soapbox, but you can show your faith in many ways, a small gesture a kind word, a being there, saying, oh, hey, what did you do this weekend? Actually, I went, I went to church. I believe in Jesus. Are you stirred up by your faith? Because, you know, in the Bible it says, uh, for faith without works is dead. Are you stirred up for the need in our city? Are you stirred up what you can do and that you can be a solution? You know, I, another thing I thought of is, is like Topo said about kind words. You know, we can be one who will criticize or we can be one who will bring life and not criticism. Proverbs 18, 20 says, Make your words good. You will be glad you did. Words can bring death or life. Are we speaking life into people's situations? You know, if we are an activator of change, we will be one who will bring hope where there is hopelessness. We will speak life and life in abundance. We will bring a good report. We will see joy where it seems overwhelming. There is such power in the words we can speak. You know, I had a, a similar incident this week and I, and I said to someone, you know, have you thought about sandwiching it? Like, you know, um, a positive, a negative, a positive, um, as we joked about it. But I often teach my kids, you know, timing is everything. And are we speaking the goodness and the hope of Jesus? Jonathan believed in the hope and the power of Jesus. His armor bearer believed it because he said, I'm right there with you. Even when he couldn't say it, even when probably Saul would say it's hopeless, don't even do that. He spoke life. Are we hungry to learn in our situation that we are in? You know, I thought, what made that armor bearer go. I think he, he believed in God, I hope, and, and I'm sure, and Jonathan, he thought this man is faithful. I want to learn from him. I want something that he has got. He is of a different spirit. Are we hungry to learn from one another? Are we hungry to want more of what God is doing? Or are we still sitting where we've always sat? You know, um, it's been a bit of a testing week for me. And um, I, I always say, you know, the enemy knows where your weak spot is. And that's probably my family, you know? And because the Jesus family, yeah, anyway. And um, on one of the busiest, well, actually both busy days to SIT, I got calls about my auntie. And, um, you know, she's, 
She's a great Christian woman. She's 82 and um, used to be a missionary. Every, every hospital and a nurse, every hospital appointment we've ever gone to, someone knows her. And she hasn't worked in the hospital for I don't know how long now. And I thought, and on the day when everything was bad and we were at SRT, you know, here was my auntie going in the ambulance um, to the hospital where, you know, you're all shut out. And, and, um, and I couldn't hardly get the words out to Graham on the phone. Like, and, I, and I was fearful because I was like, no, no. And I didn't want to go. And I wanted to go, you know, in those places. And I'm telling you this because, you know, when you're on the front line, thing, the enemy knows where to attack, hey? And then I just, I, I went outside and I pulled myself together for a minute and I just prayed and I said, you know, and um, I said, the enemy comes to steal, destroy and kill but Jesus comes to give us life and life in abundance. And I'm claiming life over my auntie. And, um, you know, I was thinking about this. Here she is, 82. And if we're talking about, are you willing to learn? Are you inspired by somebody? There's an older generation around us that can inspire us, that can move us to a different place. And we just need to be hungry to learn from them. You know, at O Week, Rio Week, half of them on that last day, when we were all tired and everything, were in our senior age group. And I thought, what mighty men and women are these these faithful people of the house, that they are prepared to be here in the rain, outside, or making cheese rolls when it's not their calling um, that poor Trevor had to do or something at one part of it. And, um, you know, but who are you being inspired by? And who... Are you inspiring for the next generation around you? Who is following you? Because Jonathan had inspired and led well that his armor bearer was prepared to put his life on the line. You know, Saul had an army of 600 and I believe a sword and it was wasted under the shade. Jonathan had a friend and some passion and a weapon and was prepared to stand up and be used and lead someone else. Do you have that within you today? It is a time not to be under the pomegranate tree. It is a time to stand up and to be counted. It's a time to grab a friend and say, come with me. We can do this together. God has a place for each and every one of us in his army, which is not asleep. It's not even on the sideline because it's a part of his mission. We need to lead someone else. We need to rise up and start in the place that God has for us. You know, in 2 Chronicles 20, 17, it says, you need not fight in this battle. Take your positions Stand and witness the salvation of the Lord who is with you. 
Do not, be, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Christ is with you, even in the difficult days, even in the pressure points. Christ is with you, even when you feel like I've had enough, even when you're having a sore moment, Christ is with you. He needs you to stand up and be active for his kingdom. Let's stand together tonight. You know, sometimes it's, it's our mind and our thinking that actually overcome, so overcomes us. You know, God is a God of life. Jesus brings life. He breaks off the negative. But for me, so often it was, you know, the negative thinking that, um, you know, the battle starts in the mind, does it not? It was the negative thinking. The, maybe the words spoken, you're never going to be good enough. Like, who do you think you are? Why would God use you? What do you have to offer? You have something of worth to offer. You have something of greatness to offer. Each and every one of you, you have something to offer. And I don't know what maybe has made you sit down, sit back, feel not good enough. You know, I think for me, it was so many little things that just became big things. And I lost so much confidence. Like, I wasn't even the same person. And, and to be fair, I don't even know how I got here from there. But it was the power of Jesus in my life. It was that I was like, okay, I can do this today. I mean, I used to... These things sound stupid to me. I used to have a panic attack going shopping, ladies. Like, honestly, truly. So, <laughs> now, Graham, now Graham wishes I had a panic attack shopping. It's true. I had to take, there was time I had to take Graham's mum with me shopping. True. Which seems, what? <laughs> it's like, what? You never told us that. There was times when I probably felt like no one cared in my life. And I had Graham right there with me, but I felt alone. There were times when I felt so broken and hurt. Why wouldn't I be on the outskirts of town? Why wouldn't I be comfortable in my room? or in my home. Why, Jesus, you can use somebody else. But he's saying, I have a plan and a purpose for your life. He's saying that to you tonight, to each and to every one of you tonight. I have a plan and a purpose for you. And it's about being enlarged and not being comfortable. It's time to be a Jonathan, a truly is people. There's somebody behind you that needs that. I see it every single day. And actually sometimes now I just think, even in those hard days that Topor was talking about, I think, thank you God. Thank you God for the opportunity. Thank you, God, that I am here. Thank you, God, that you are a God of life and of hope and of abundance.
But maybe tonight you need to know that, that you have a purpose as a Jonathan or as an armour bearer to be one that will fight a good fight for the Kingdom of God. Your weapon is whatever is in your hand today. Whatever. You can do so many things with two hands and a mouth. A simple thing, a simple word, a simple hug, showing the love of Jesus. But God has a place for each and every one of you. I know it. I know it. I know it. I can see it. I felt stirred by it all all day. And now we have this beautiful place of an enlargement. First in the natural, they say, this is the natural. Bull Richardson Drive is the natural. And then in the spiritual. Let's pray together tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, Lord Jesus. We know that you, Jesus, are a God of hope and of power. You are one that loves each and every one of us. And if tonight you're standing there or you're online tonight and you've never said, yes, Jesus, I choose you. You've never said, yes, Jesus, I want to be a part of what you're doing. You've never said, yes, Jesus, I believe in who you are. I believe that hope. I believe that future. Then I'm just asking you to raise your hand tonight. This is not for me. This is for him. And if you're online, you can just push that click to say, yes, Jesus. I'm believing tonight. I'm believing for change in my life. I'm believing for a new day. I'm believing for you to be my King and my Saviour. If that's you tonight, then just say, yes, Jesus, I choose you. I choose you. Thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. And tonight, as each and every one of us stand here, Lord, Lord God, I speak enlargement over this place. I speak enlargement over every single life. I speak enlargement and purpose over every person standing and every person watching online tonight. Let them know your hope. Let them know your purpose in you. Lord, raise up the Jonathans. Raise up the armour bearers. Raise up the passion and the fire within us. Lord Jesus, we pray these things in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, beautiful people. We're going to end with some praise. Make sure you get a hot chocolate or a cup of coffee. Let's end in praise.